Jesus lived right. Jesus made life right for others. Jesus wants us to do the same. That's the foundational principle behind this book. Jesus on justice, living lives of compassion and conviction. The man bringing the challenge and biblical action guide is Dr. Don Pastersky, a sociologist who has spent his life exploring and modeling creative ways to pursue human rights and equity for all people. Most recently with World Vision International, before that World Vision Canada, and Don, a personal wonderful reunion, but you are you're right on time for the world situation, but I just think we, we, we just had We Day at the Air Canada Centre. That must encourage you and your passion for justice. Well, We Day is a cultural expression of growing momentum for people who are concerned for others who are living with so much less. Uh, you know, World Vision has had uh, uh, their whole commitment to this venture, but I think what we should be encouraged about is that uh, Christian leaders and evangelical leaders are picking up the torch and saying the gospel is incomplete if we don't have special concern and love for our global as well as our local uh, people in need. Your book is, uh, it's a beautiful book. This isn't a typical research report. It is, uh, it's full of beautiful pictures. It's laid out, I'm just gonna, uh, you know, here's a page just for example. Uh, marvelous themes, beautiful pictures. Uh, at the end of every chapter, there's a prayer response. And of course, it's loaded with quotes. Here's one of them. God's justice mandate commends global citizenship where those with more champion for those with less. In some ways, that's a no brainer, but uh, well, it's, it, help, it, <laughs> you know, we, we need to actually be a part of the action that makes the difference. Well, we also need to understand that Jesus is multidimensional. Uh, we understand Jesus is a teacher. Uh, we, we see Jesus in his human expression. We worship him as being divine. But if we follow Jesus in his lifestyle, we realize that he's an advocate for the oppressed. Mm -hmm. He cares for lepers who are outsiders. Uh, he reaches out to women and grants them dignity uh, in a culture and time when uh, they certainly were second class. Uh, he, he welcomes children. So Jesus uh, reaches to those who are outside with invitations to come inside. Um, in your book, you talk about world leaders and their paper promises. I've kept this piece of paper. It's actually Globe and Mail. Extreme poverty could be wiped out by 2030. That's from the president of the World Bank. What, does this get you excited? Well, we need to keep aiming to create a better world. This is the creator's vision. This is Jesus' vision, that we would be people who are marked with uh, spiritual vitality that can give us uh, the energy and the vision to live right. Uh, but we need to also be concerned about the social well-being of people. And uh, it, this isn't uh, often uh, understood in terms of some of Jesus' aspirations. But, you know, he, he confronted uh, tax collectors and turned them into responsible citizens. Uh, I wish I could have walked with Jesus and Zacchaeus the morning after he spent time in his house knocking on doors and making restitution, which in some ways was restoring some social order yeah. because Zacchaeus uh, had ripped those people off and taken resources uh, for himself uh, that he should have been sharing with, with people in general. And so uh, Jesus in that sense was confronting the Roman authorities in his time. So we see Jesus active politically, we see him active relationally, we see him active in the context of his religious community. And we are to be like him. Uh, you talk about Jesus disrupting the cultural status quo. He hung out with the wrong people and one of your chapters is risking one's reputation. I don't know if surely not many watching know how much you've pushed the envelope when it comes to loving your neighbor. Well, I think Jesus invites us to be at least a little bit courageous, Moira. Uh, we're not uh, invited to sort of sit back and watch life. Our invitation is to be involved with life. And, but I must say, I wish that I had been more alert to some of the issues that we have 
uh, sort of addressed as Canada, in Canada. Uh, I mean, for example, making our buildings accessible for people in wheelchairs. Here, here are people who have mostly have no uh, reason uh, that they've inflicted upon themselves are dealing with a, a disabled impediment. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when we can make life more accessible, more fair, uh, we are addressing uh, justice issues. I think one of the one of the heritage things for us in Canada is that our universal medical care is an expression of justice for all. Uh, and here in Canada, uh, we can, I think, lift ourselves with a sense of, of collective and cultural pride, if I can put it that way, because years ago, uh, there was concern for all Canadians. And, you know, if all people had the kind of access uh, to medical care as we have, our world would be such a different place. We are so blessed, so blessed. Speaking of world leaders, I just, I'm gonna risk asking your, your uh, response to a, a very different Pope. Well, how do you like the well, Pope, emphasis that's coming? <laughs> Pope right Francis is, uh, is making news on the front page uh, and uh, it isn't that uh, Pope Francis is changing doctrine, but he's saying, where should we be putting the emphasis? What's important? And I think as followers of Jesus, that's a question we should all be asking. So how can we create a world where more people can flourish? Uh, and that's, that's a global question. That's also a local question. You know, when you follow Jesus, Jesus didn't get up in the morning and go to the synagogue. He did that occasionally. But on the normal days and events of his life, he interacted with people. If, if uh, healing was in order, uh, if uh, sometimes confrontation w in terms of correction of behavior was, was the menu of the day, Jesus was situational. And what, but what we see in the overall pattern of Jesus' lifestyle is the, he acted both with conviction and compassion. Those are the two words you emphasize. To champion a better place for people, particularly living in disadvantaged situations, so they could, so they could experience life as God created it to be experienced. Now, we're not the politicians. We're not the big decision makers. What would you like to see us doing? Well, I think different? we need to continue to collectively try to influence policy. We cannot have a just society without governments coming to the table to equitably reach out to people who are on the edge. And so it's our responsibility to be engaged uh, in, in our political process. There, there is a sense in which because uh, the social concern that Christians want to articulate walk alongside the social obligation that governments need to contribute is that we have this interface of, of gospel and state in terms of the equity and accessible uh, reach uh, for a quality life. And uh, we, we need to stand together on that. I quoted you before the program. You were a little shocked. This is out of your book. Living without loving is like committing suicide in slow motion. Moira, that's because selfishness is destructive. And when we live with disregard for ourselves and disregard for others, selfishness will ruin families. Selfishness turns us inward. And the invitation of the Christian life is to love. Mm -hmm. And so this love hopefully can extend relationally inside our families, inside our social structures. Uh, it may it also extend in the global sense to our neighbors, our global neighbors who are living with so much less. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, Jesus got it right when he said, what's the greatest commandment? Well, love the Lord your God. Love yourself and love your neighbor as yourself. Well, you're echoing my near neighbor. We have a Malawian tribal chief in our home this week. And she says, poverty is just our inability to love. You have great hope for the future, and oh dear, we are living in that period where there's really bad news. Not just every week, sometimes every day. One of the quotes in your book, I think is a balancer, Steve Garber. 
Mm -hmm. uh, we had the vicar of Baghdad here last week and he said, yeah, I know what the Bible says, but we will continue to move forward with conviction and compassion. Here's the quote, ours is the work of repairing the ruins, the calling to act with responsibility for history, hoping for the renewal of all things, even as we know that at our best, we are pilgrims in the ruins. You're not discouraged because of the season that we are in. Well, we're living in a time when uh, our world is facing terrorism in ways that we haven't seen for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Uh, at the root of some of this is our need to figure out how to deal with our diversity. And here again, it seems to me that Canada uh, has come to the foreground. So for a long time, uh, my appeal has been, let's take permission to be who we are. Let's be faithful to that. But in the context of uh, these times, we also have to give permission for people to live uh, with a commitment to their convictions. Now, I'm not talking about life outside the boundaries of, of criminal behavior or immoral behavior, mm -hmm. but in terms of living together in this world, in some senses, we need to figure out how to love each other. And then this world is going to be a lot better place. And I can do that without agreeing with each other, and I can accept people whether I agree with them or not. So we can move ahead. This is a man who has done it for decades in creative and courageous ways. I just want you to see uh, one expression of your vision in all of this. Take a look. Together, we can strive for a justice where children learn to play. Mothers and fathers work, lead and love. Families build houses and live in them. People sing and dance, creation and nations thrive and God smiles. Mm. Beautiful. It's a beautiful book, Don. I'm so thrilled that you've done it. It comes from so much lived love. <laughs> Thank you for all that you have done. And uh, you tell you want to be inspired. Um, this is a man I always wish I could listen longer to. And this is one way to do it. This book is at our e-store, Jesus on Justice, Living Lives of Compassion and Conviction. Thanks for showing up. Oh, Good to see you again. Treat, treat to be here.